Considering my own ukulele passions, let's see how many boxes get ticked by this one. Keep watching. Yeah, good day, welcome back. It's got a ukulele review day. As ever, this is the summary video review. Below each video review is a link that will take you back to the website where you get a lot more information about this and other reviews as well. Also down there are some links where people have chosen to donate to help keep this site going. I say thank you to them every week. Incredibly generous of them. It means I don't take money from brands or stores. I never will because they would just be product placement adverts. And you can also help out by subscribing to the YouTube channel, ring the bell as well, and you'll get notified of new stuff coming your way. Okay, this one, um, certain amount of subjectivity in this one. It's a, it's a Luthier review. I always like looking at Luthier reviews. And the thing about Luthier reviews is that they tend to be one-offs that you're reviewing, so they're not so much a review of the instrument itself, but more a review of the Luthier's work because you can specify what you want from a luthier. Um, but also the subjectivity comes in because I saw this one go up, up, up for sale and I bought it for myself for the simple reason that it ticked all the boxes for me that I really like. Vintage looking sopranos. That luthier is from the UK. He's called Dave Morgan, who builds under the name of DJ Morgan Ukuleles. I've looked at a couple of his before. They've done extremely well. He's a very, very talented builder. And this is the one that caught my eye. This is the DJ Morgan vintage style soprano. And um, let's just have a look. This ticks my boxes. So I have to say, subjectivity is out of the way. I'm going to look at this as objectively as I can as well. But I clearly like the look of these because I am a big fan of simple standard sopranos and that's what this is although i say simple we'll get into it um what he's done with this is he's modeled this on a 1920s uh, vintage hawaiian ukulele using very old traditional building techniques and i'll come on to those as we get through the review this is made of all solid mahogany wood um single piece on the top uh, back and sides i believe yeah all bent sides and it is simple, but there's a nice bit of sort of grain and attractiveness to the wood. I really like mahogany sopranos. The bridge, exactly what I want. There's another box ticked. Simple uh, slot bridge made of ebony, Makassar ebony. Really, really neat and tidy and smooth. Also very traditionally, the saddle itself is made of ebony. So that's a straight topped wooden saddle. Very, very traditional. And then the design's traditional. This is an inlaid cherry, maple and walnut sound hole rosette through there that he's fitted himself, inlaid himself, an awful lot of work in that. Extremely attractive, very sort of Nunez vintage looking, very sort of early ukulele style look. The body is finished in a hand rubbed cellulose lacquer, so it's slightly open pore. It's not super glossy. It will age over time because it's a natural finish rather than a, an artificial plastic finish. That's really nice. It's really, really tidy. Then things start to get even more interesting. Inside, simple braces. The linings are not notched, um, as were, was the case with the originals. But the ne this is a really interesting build. It's almost kind of like a Spanish heel thing. The neck uh, has a block on the end of it, and then the body is built around the edge of the neck. So actually the back is the last thing to go on. I'll show you a feature that shows that off in a moment. So he basically builds and slots the sides in, then puts the top on, then puts the back on. And as you can see there, the cap on the heel is actually part of the back um, because there is th th this covers the, the basically the dovetail that's in there. It's not really a dovetail, it's more of a Spanish heel built around it. Great for stability, no bolt in there great for keeping the weight down very very secure way of building it what's also interesting about what he's done here with the neck is you'll see that the fingerboard on this one is flush to the body I'll come on to that in a moment which was the case with the original ukuleles but the problem with that is it could lead to some very very high action that was next to impossible to take down so whilst he's kept that flat to the top as you can see there's an angle on the back so the back narrows so he's effectively put in a, a back bow into it to keep the action down whilst keeping the frets uh, parallel with the top of the fingerboard. It's really hard to see, but you can see the angle here. Um, if I hold that up straight, this is where the angle is. 
Very, very clever. I like that a lot. That neck is made of mahogany, all single piece, all finished in satin, no joints, really nice carving, and a really nice sort of flattened profile up at the nut, and a really traditional Hawaiian roomy 37 for a soprano, 37 mil nut, 30 from G2A. That's just what I want as well, another box ticked. The wood for the fingerboard, there is a fingerboard drop top on it, but it's still flush with the top, is called Tambuti, which is new for me, but it's a hardwood from Southern African States. It's pretty enough, uh, very, very good condition. And very traditionally, he's fitted this with 12 frets, which stop with one at the joint of the body. Again, very, very traditional. They're almost bar type frets, very traditional looking, no sharp edges at all. And like the earliest ukuleles, no dots facing out or on the side. Now I'm normally critical about things like that, but in something that's been built to be traditional, I understand why they're not there. It doesn't bother me. There's only 12 frets. I can find my way around a soprano. The headstock, very traditional Hawaiian ukulele look. It's a crown. Um, that is an ebony nut, incidentally. So more wood for the nut. Crown headstock, more of the inlay to mirror the sound hole down the top but these side swipes as it were are part of the dj morgan style of decoration i think that looks great i think that looks very traditional i suppose my only addition that i'd ask for if i had my way would be to continue that stripe running down the fingerboard i think that would really set it off like a traditional nunez style instrument but i'm really splitting hairs thankfully being a soprano dave knows these are friction pegs facing back, made by De Young. They're as good quality as Grover fours or sixes, so I've got no complaint with those at all. And he's fitted it with unnamed clear fluorocarbon strings. Maybe he's using fishing line, like all good ukulele players do. I don't know what they are. They're clear fluorocarbon. They play okay. And the list, as I say, luthier instruments. Depends what your specs are. So just to give you an indication, he had these up at 395 quid, and I bought one. Um, when you think about the man hours that's gone into this, I know this is small, but the detailing like this, the, <coughs> the detailing, like, detailing like the carved neck and the way he set that in place, 395, it's not a lot of hours. Turn that into your plumber's hours or an electrician's hours. It's not a lot of money at all. In fact, it's very cheap. Um, and I think it absolutely looks the bomb. I think it's so traditional. It's so nice, it's so nicely finished. I don't think I've been as excited about Soprano this much as since I looked at that Ken Tim's. And look what happened there with the prices. Um, I just think this really does tick my boxes. I can't get over how light it is. 310 grams, perfectly balanced at the, at the 12th of the joint. 310 grams, you, wouldn't, you just don't know it's there. It's thin, it's really resonant. Dave himself says this is the loudest soprano he's ever built. And I've played some of his others and they are really no slouches. There is so little to this, but it's so sturdy because of that joint. I'm really rambling, aren't I? I'm trying to be objective. Look, I like the look of this. This is, my, this is up my street, but you cannot argue with the finish, the looks, the build quality, because I can't find anything wrong with it at all. You know, if you're in the market for a trad soprano, something like that is just bang on, isn't it? Um, let's have a play. Here we go. It'll be in tune because I've been playing this an awful lot. It's in tune. Right, okay. Dave says this is the loudest one he's ever made. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of the loudest sopranos I've ever played. This is up there with the Tims. This has got an absolute cannon of a punch to it, which is great for a soprano, a real bark. And while sopranos naturally have a bit less sustain than other scales because of the smaller body, not always. If you can build a resonant instrument, as you can hear, there is sustain here. There, the whole thing's vibrating and sort of mm, into me.
so there's peppy, jangly there, um, but it's warm. It's obviously bright and bouncy because it's a soprano, but can you, there's a warmth, a woody warmth. So that's your jangly peppy. People say you can't play melodies on sopranos, you can. I've played I think that sounds absolutely lovely it's not a one-trick pony it's not all bright it's not all dark it's not muddy the clarity is superb it's got a really nice rounded tone right there across the middle um, obviously it's got the peppy jangliness that you want from a soprano it's got great punch uh, it's louder than some tenors I've played this I mean that it's a really loud instrument it just rings on and on and on it's got an incredible punch uh, but i really like that balanced tone to it that it's not just all zingy and sort of nasally like some sopranos can be there's more rounded woodiness to it the looks do it for me that's the subjective side the scale does it for me that's the subjective side there is nothing subjective about the quality of the build here and how this has been put together there is nothing subjective about the fact that that volume is so good and there's nothing subjective i don't think about the tone being nice and balanced from right down the middle um 395 quid what a bargain i don't think he's got any more of these he made a couple of them you might get in touch with him and say hi dave and ask nicely and he may build you one uh he may build some more but equally he's building other stuff he's a low volume builder so just keep an eye on his website and see what comes up that's what i did i saw this i knew dave and i thought i've got to have that um and i'm so glad i picked it up because it didn't disappoint at all the dave morgan DJ Morgan, vintage style soprano in all solid mahogany. Uh, this one has excited me as much as that Ken Timms did. They're on a par. Um, I think it's just absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot on. Thank you so much, Dave. It's not on loan. I bought it with my own funds, not with blog funds, with my money. And that's because this is just the sort of thing that I like. And I really am wanging on now, aren't I? DJ Morgan, what a bit of a, a, bit of a genius. He should build more, I think. What do you think? Tell me. Thank you very much for watching and your ongoing support. Um, this has been a real fun one. It's just a joy to write about something like this. This isn't a review. This is just me going, ah, it's great, isn't it? Uh, there goes my subjectivity. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Nice looking week ahead, I think, weather-wise. Maybe a bit mixed in the UK, but I hope you enjoy yourselves, whatever you're doing. Take care of each other. Go carefully. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.